<laughs> okay. That was noisy. All right, everyone. Welcome back to Cody's Lab. In this video, I'm going to attempt to extract potassium from bananas. As you can see, I've acquired 10 kilograms or 22 pounds of the fruit for the extraction. Now there's a question. Do I extract the potassium from the whole banana or just the part that you eat? I think I would most like to see both extracted separately so we can compare the amounts. Weighing the peels gives me 3.44 kilograms or about 34% of the weight of the fruit. I will be burning the bananas down to ash in order to have a much smaller volume of material to extract the potassium from. Now the banana itself has a lot of water in it. It's not very flammable. So to remove the water, I'm going to be cutting it into thin pieces and then drying it out with this uh, dryer here. Banana peels will also be dried out, but to do that I'll just hang them up on a drying rack. To keep the bananas from sticking together and to each other, I am cutting them into a bowl of cornstarch and water. The cornstarch does not contain potassium, so it will not change the amount of potassium in the bananas. But it will make it much easier to work with later on. Here we are. The next day, everything is now dry, as you can tell. Cat is making a mess. Just in case anyone still isn't sold on the cornstarch, watch this. <laughs> there we are, all well, the banana is now dried out. It is so hard to keep myself from eating them. These are so good. I think I'm gonna go uh, get some more bananas and make a few batches on my own after this. The six and a half kilos of banana has been converted to just over one and a half and my scale just turned off. That weight does include about 100 grams of cornstarch. So here's one of the dried banana chips. Here's a blowtorch. As you can see, it doesn't stay lit. Turns out the bananas are very hard to burn. Fortunately, I have an idea to make them a little bit easier. Since I'm going to be running my charcoal port anyway, I figured I'd throw the banana chips and skins into some paint cans, load them in along with the sticks, so they get converted into charcoal. Here's the banana char. Put it on the scale and see what it weighs. Looks like we're down to just under half a kilo now. <laughs> that was cool. It's like glass. <laughs> but now they should be much easier to burn because all the volatiles have been removed, including every last bit of water. Let's uh, put them back in the bag for a minute and weigh the peels as well. Here's the peels. Hundred and twenty grams. 
Okay, come outside. I got a metal pan set up. Gonna put the banana chips on top of it. Throw in a bit of lighter fluid. And we light it up. I put a chair over top of it to uh, keep the snow off. On fire and burning. So here's the banana charcoal burned. Uh, not all of it did burn. There's still a lot of little bits of charcoal inside of this, so I think to finish it off, I'm going to use the furnace. So I'll just uh, put it in a stainless steel dish here to kind of spread it out. Then we'll cook it up until it's red hot. Use the electrical heating. There are, of course, a few larger pieces that didn't burn. I'll throw those in there as well. So while that's finishing, I'm going to do the same thing with the peels. Burn those to ash as well. Okay, it's been a couple of hours. Let's see how the banana ash is doing. It's still got a little bit of carbon in it. But I think we'll call that good. Okay, so that's just under 67 grams of ash. Here's the ash from the peels. We get 51, 52 grams. That's almost as much as the fruit. Even though the peels weighed significantly less to begin with. That is interesting. So here's the ash from the banana peels and the banana flesh. Uh, you'll notice that this uh, flesh ash is a little bit darker. That's just because it has a little bit more carbon left over in it. The peels were a lot easier to burn down. Uh, that shouldn't bother things too much. And let's uh, dissolve out the potassium with a little bit of water. I got this, some distilled water here. So let's just uh, pour it in. About yay much. Put the lids back on. Give it a bit of a stir. And I'll let it settle out. We'll pour off the clear liquid, assuming we get clear liquid, and then I'll add some more water to kind of rinse things through. Alright, looks like it's settling out okay. So here's the banana flesh ash water containing the soluble portion of the ash. So this water now contains probably mostly potassium carbonate with a little bit of sodium carbonate, uh, some hydroxides, and uh, various trace minerals. Uh, you can see if I take some uh, pH paper, it is strongly alkaline, but it is fairly dilute. So we need to concentrate the solution some. Here it is, it's cooled down a bit. You can see some uh, whitish material has precipitated. Now that is likely potassium carbonate. So I'm gonna add a little bit of water just to get everything to dissolve again. I've also boiled down the material taken from the banana peels. I don't like how contaminated my solution is. It's mostly soot and really wouldn't cause much of a problem, but I'm gonna remove it. So I've got this little vacuum filter set up here. I'll just uh, pull it through. That should clarify the solution. 
well, it's clearer. So now I've got a solution containing mostly sodium and potassium carbonate. But I want just the potassium. So, to separate out the sodium, I'm going to take advantage of the fact that perchlorate salts are usually very soluble. Ammonium perchlorate, very soluble. Sodium perchlorate, soluble. Calcium perchlorate, etc. But potassium perchlorate is an exception. Potassium chlorate is only very slightly soluble. So, if I add some ammonium perchlorate to the solution, potassium chlorate should fall out. I'll dissolve it in water first, just to make things more obvious. Alright, here we go. If potassium is present in sufficient quantity, it should precipitate as a white cloud. Yeah, that looks like it works. So the ammonium perchlorate has been added, and the potassium perchlorate is settling out of solution. That's about just over 200 milliliters, so it is possible there's about 4 grams of potassium perchlorate still dissolved. I can reduce that by cooling it down. So let's go pop this in the freezer. See the potassium perchlorate is settled out of solution. I'm just about to pour off the liquid on top. Now one thing you might have noticed is there actually appears to be more potassium in the peels. See this one was from the peels. Than there was in the actual flesh of the bananas. That's interesting. So I'm just going to spoon this into the vacuum filter so we can remove the remaining liquid. I also have some cold water to rinse with. Just use a little bit of that. Rinse that cold water through. So I just baked the potassium chlorate dry. Now it's time to put it in my little dish and weigh it. Let's put it on the scale. What we got? We got 33 grams potassium perchlorate. And let's uh, weigh the potassium I extracted from the peels. 41 grams from the peels. So I actually recovered more potassium from the peels than the actual part of the banana that you eat. Yeah, unless I've mixed something up, <laughs> it actually might make sense to eat the peel if you want potassium. <laughs> well, there's not really any reason to keep these separated anymore. So let's just uh, combine the two. There's all the potassium I extracted from the bananas. Of course, this is still not pure potassium. It's over half oxygen for one. So, I'm going to remove the oxygen next. Stainless steel flask here. I'm just going to put it in. And potassium chlorate decomposes at about 500 degrees Celsius. So I'll just go pop this into the furnace. And boil off the oxygen. Just hoping it doesn't overreact. Hmm. Yeah, so this should be potassium chloride. It looks to me like it foamed up but didn't boil over. So got kind of lucky there. You can see the spots where oxygen bubbles would have been coming out. Let's uh... Hmm. Might have to dissolve it out with water. That's yeah, probably better anyway. Get rid of all the contamination from the stainless steel. Didn't hold up as well as I thought it would. 
Maybe it was all the extra oxygen. So it looks like all the potassium perchlorate was converted to chloride, which I have in a water solution now. Let's uh, pop that out of the thing. I'm going to place potassium chloride solution in a glass dish, and we're going to evaporate the water once again. So let's uh, transfer it over to this other dish so I can weigh it and see how much I was able to recover. There we go. Put it on the scale. That's uh, 35.7 grams. It's roughly half the weight of the original perchlorate, so I've managed to remove all the oxygen. And I'm left with pretty much pure potassium chloride. Now, this is still about half chlorine by weight. I'd like to remove that and be left with the pure potassium. But before we do that, I think it's in the best form right now to measure the radioactivity. You can see I've got a Geiger counter going over here. Let's put this on the potash and see if we can pick up any of the radiation. So the background is about 20 counts per minute. Let's see if it increases from there. I can already hear it clicking more often. I'll just speed up the video. It takes a minute or two for the counts to come in. So yeah, it's about double the background radiation. When I pull it away, you hear it stops clicking so much. So the stuff I have here is definitely slightly radioactive. That proves that bananas are radioactive. That's due to the small amount of the potassium-40 isotope. Of course, there's not very much of it, so they're not really radioactive enough to worry about. To pull the chlorine off the potassium, I'm going to use my alkali metal converter, which I've shown in another video. And I am going to add 8 grams of lithium. I should only need like 3 grams, but turns out lithium is very reactive to even nitrogen, so it's fairly hard to get a 100% conversion. So here's the potassium chloride, which will be extracted from the bananas. Put it in there on top of the lithium. There it is. There it is. We have metallic potassium. Here is a close-up on the potassium. When pure, it is a soft, silvery white metal, which rapidly tarnishes to form a gold color, and then with more tarnish, a blue color that you see here. And eventually, it'll end up a grayish white as more oxides build up. I, for one, think it is rather pretty. Now, unfortunately, this is only about half the potassium I was expecting. Uh, if I got full conversion on the potassium chloride, I should have expected around 18 grams instead of this 9 here. I have figured out what happened, though. You see, the potassium vapor is supposed to come down this tube, condense into a liquid, and then drip out into my bottle of mineral oil. But the end of the tube got a little bit too cold, and some of the potassium solidified. Once solidified, it plugged the tort, and the potassium vapor had nowhere to go except out through the liquid tin seal. The molten tin absorbed most of the potassium vapor. Only a little bit of it looks like it burned inside the furnace. Obviously, I need to redesign this a little bit. I think this is probably the last time I'll use this particular tort. But it did fail safe. You know, that's exactly what I wanted it to do in the event that this had occurred. Speaking of yield losses, uh, according to the FDA, a banana has approximately 360 milligrams of potassium per 100 grams of the fruit. And uh, judging by the perchlorate that I managed to extract, I had about half that. Now, I don't think my yield to that point was actually 50%. Like, the burning it to ash 
washing it out. I, I can't imagine the losses being more than a few percent. You know, you've got transfer losses and things, but you're not going to lose half of it doing that. So I think the banana actually didn't have as much as they said it would. And, you know, fruit can have a wide range of potassium content depending on the conditions it's grown in. Perhaps the soil that it was grown in was a little bit potassium deficient. I'd say that's likely. So anyway, now it's time for the part of the video you've all been waiting for. I have made a tiny banana out of potassium extracted from bananas. <laughs> Let's just chuck it into the water and see what happens. <laughs> nice. The power of bananas. <laughs> I think potassium is one of my favorite alkali metals. It's got a good mix of reactivity and energy density. <laughs> anyway, hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time. <laughs>